The first Yes album to be released would be called uh, simply Yes, and this would come out in the July of 1969. And uh, for the UK release, we just got this uh, big Yes logo here on a black background. However, uh, in the US version, which I only have the CD here, they would uh, get this cover, um, an actual image of the band uh, in the front of a sort of... Um, um, I also it was a graveyard for many years, but it, it, more, it more looks like sort of an outdoor uh, antique collection sort of place, really. However, there's been a little bit of debate over the years and uncertainty about where this actual location is. And uh, so this is the hunt for the location of the first Yes album. As we know, the UK release of the album would be this cover, and then the US release would be this one. And to be honest, I'm not sure why the band uh, did that, um, why they chose a different cover. Maybe it was to draw some attention or to get a new attraction, perhaps within the US market. Although within Yes, history, we're very much um, used to or familiar with the artwork of Roger Dean, for example, there would only be two Yes albums where they would stand at a physical location. Uh, one would be the Tomato album in England, and we know where that one is, and the other one is the first album, or the US release of the first album, uh, which is somewhere in London. All the rest are either Roger Dean covers or um, graphic design covers with either the Yes logo or some sort of design and um, it, it's a little bit of uh, difficulty because it's not like where we can type in other bands for example like Abbey Road by the Beatles and we still know where that location is or Animals by Pink Floyd and we still will we still know where that factory is or the first uh, Black Sabbath album for example which is a uh, watermill um, maybe the reason why it's so difficult to find uh, the location of the US version of this album is simply because um, this first album really didn't launch Yes um, into big commercial superstardom really. It, was, it wouldn't be until the third album, the Yes album, and then into Fragile and Close to the Edge with the band experience really superstardom. So um, they were still finding their feet, uh, I think, during the first two albums, which is why the other cover uh, might not be as popular to find like the other band. So uh, this makes it a little bit harder for us. Uh, in the midst of our quest. As I said, um, the US would uh, get this cover. Uh, here in the UK, we would get this cover with the black background. However, in the 2003 remastered version of the CD, we would, um, lucky enough, be able to get both. Uh, but even though you can get uh, both of them on vinyl these days. And so I suppose the, ob the obvious place really is to look within the sleeve itself and to see if there is any information that we can sort of find out to see where this location is. Uh, a good starting point would be to find out who took the picture, for example. And we find out here that the pictures are by a, a photographer named David Gahar. I think you would say his name. And um, he was sort of a famous photographer who took uh, lots of pictures of different bands all over the years. There's pictures of him with John Lennon. There's another picture here with him with Bruce Springsteen. It looks like he did uh, a lot of jazz musicians. And uh, it looks like he was involved with um, the photo shoots for the first Yes album. And it's not just the album cover, keep in mind, that we have. There's all these collections of photos that he took with the band. And if you look at these photos here, they're all wearing the same clothes, even though some of them are in black and white. So it's obvious that this photo shoot was probably done in one day and they went to various sections around London. And uh, even when they go outside uh, the main location here, there's other pictures of them in different parts of London. They're walking over a street there. Um, we see what, what seems to be like they're in front of a garage. So, um, is there a way we can find out the actual location of this uh, site? I think some of the famous um, signatures, I think, would be the two eagles who are looking at each other on opposite sides, and it almost seems to be like a, almost like a palace entrance with pillars uh, where Bruford and Banks are sitting. And there just seems to be all these different uh, monuments and these different... Uh, statues. Uh, but, but outside of the album cover, just looking at other images from uh, a Google search of David Gar's 
uh, pictures, we would also see a bit of a larger scale of the location from these other pictures. For example, we see one of John here also in front of this location. You can see the uh, entrance there of, of the pillars behind him. And also we get this wider shot of the band and we're able to see the location there in its full of form. But unfortunately, even within the album sleeve itself or within the CD booklet, uh, we don't get any information of uh, where the site was actually taken. We only get the photographer's name. However, we would get a little bit of information from uh, Chris Welsh's book, uh, Close to the Edge, The Story of Yes. And Wikipedia also uh, quotes this information and they say, The front cover of the United States and Canada presses feature a photograph of the band at an architectural centre in Fulham, taken by American photographer David Gahar. However, when you type in Architectural Center Fulham uh, in Google and then you type in the Yes album next to that, uh, nothing does seem to come up, so there doesn't seem to be any obvious connection uh, immediately. However, that doesn't mean that the place didn't exist. And the fact that when you search on the internet, there doesn't seem to be an obvious pop-up or an obvious answer tells me that there is a bit of uh, mystery and controversy around this location. It could be that Chris Welsh you know, got that information correct that it is in Fulham somewhere, but maybe that the location is actually not there anymore. But this search for the uh, first Yes album cover would also then take me to the actual website of um, David Gar, where a lot of his images are actually um, are still there and you're able to order uh, whatever image you want. And so this would lead me then to write into the supervisor or the manager of the website and I asked him this question. My name is Dale Norman and I am searching for the physical location of a picture David Gahar took for the progressive rock band Yes in London sometime in July 1969. One of these images he took would end up being the front cover for the US release of the band's debut album called Yes, but the UK version had a different cover. Do you have this information available? Thank you, Dale Norman. Uh, simply the answer I got was, if David Gahar took the image, it is in our archives, so um, that lead didn't really take me anywhere really. Uh, they probably have the raw image within their collection, but uh, certainly nothing about the details of uh, where the physical location is. And in fact then, if you go into Getty Images, which is the website that sponsors David Gahar's artwork, um, on one of the pictures of Yes, uh, of the members of Yes at the same location of the album cover, uh, they would give us this information. Uh, the band were in London in July 1969, performing live during their free concert in Hyde Park on July 5th, 1969, London, England. And so um, they're telling us that uh, it's not in Fulham, it's in Hyde Park. Um, the fact that there's a little bit of uh, contradictions here tells me that uh, there is no certainty on the actual location of, um, of the album cover. However, who knows, maybe it is in Hyde Park, so I typed that in on the, on the internet, I put Ar Architectural Center, and uh, surely enough, there is one that did come up, and um, I was quite struck when I found this image of the Lodge Cafe in Hyde Park, and I don't know about you, I was sort of struck with the similarity there of the palace-shaped uh, roof with the pillars, and um, comparing it to the Yes album cover, you could see a resemblance, but I think maybe in closer detail, the surrounding of the location doesn't quite fit because we have such an outdoor uh, set in there in that modern day picture but uh, it certainly did grab my attention when I first looked at it and I think for me the most obvious reason is um, if you look at the large cafe there is obviously a door and windows there going in inside a building whereas you look at the Yes album that is just a blank wall it doesn't go anywhere so unfortunately I think this lead here comes to an end at this point and again after typing in Hyde Park uh, yes, location. Another place that grabbed my attention was this image here of um, of the Alexandria Gate Lodge, um, also in Hyde Park. And again, that sort of pillar with the roof sort of uh, looks closely um, resembling that of the Yes album. But again, we see windows and a doorway going into a house. Another theory by uh, some fans is that the album cover 
is located in Highgate Cemetery, North London. And uh, for many years, I always thought this was a graveyard. But um, I, if you look at some of the images here of the cemetery, you know, we see a lot of um, crosses, crucifixes, Celtic crosses, gravestones, and tombstones. And um, the fact that we don't really see that at all in this image, you know, I can't see any crosses or graveyards. Uh, tells me that um, this is probably not the case either. However, this search would then take me uh, to another website called uh, Musical Maps, where you can pretty much find a list of bands and uh, type in what uh, band you want to look up, and indeed Yes is on there, and uh, the, the self-titled Yes album is there, and they claim that it's uh, located at Crowther Architectural Furnishings, uh, now closed, presumably in London, England. Um, and then the Google Maps actually take us to uh, Kuma uh, Road, uh, also to be located in Fulham, which is where Chris Welsh also said the location was. And another theory by some fans is that it is actually located on Munster Road, which uh, if you look at the map here, it's only a six minute drive from each other, so uh, there's still it still uh, seems to be coming from the Fulham area in general, which tells me that um, the location has to be somewhere in this area uh, within London. But uh, if we look at some of these images here, um, the, la the landscape just, uh, looks completely different, and I'm guessing that. Uh, it is completely different to how it was in 1969. However, um, this search would uh, sort of maybe come up with a promising lead because if we type in Crowther Architectural Furnishings London into Google Images, one of the first things that came up was this image here, here which is the uh, cover of a book called the T. Crowther and Son Collection Architectural Furnishings. And if we were to go to Amazon, we see that uh, this is, seems to be the front cover of a catalogue for T. Crowther and Son collection of architectural furnishings. So who knows, maybe if we were to read that catalogue, there might be some images there w that would uh, show some resemblance to the uh, uh, to the first Yes album cover. Uh, you know, antiques come and go, and if it was an architectural centre, there must have been lots of different items. And um, I don't know about you, but that little roof there with the pillars on the top left corner, who knows, that may very well be the same... Uh, pillars and roof that we see on the first Yes album and uh, you know when we compare this picture here of the front cover of this book we see there is a statue of uh, someone playing the violin it looks like for example and then if you look at the album cover it looks like we see a statue of someone playing what looks like the flute I think so um, who knows there might be a connection here with these statues and uh, this magazine was released in October of 1992 so uh, again this is going back uh, quite a few years as well and um, who knows if this architectural site is even still there today and uh, that um, unfortunately is, is as close as I've got into finding some sort of connection here with the uh, first uh, we're finding the location of the first ES album. Uh, another piece of artwork that we would see for example in the British uh, release of the album would be uh, inside the sleeve here yeah, where uh, we have images of the band at a gig first of all and then we have the uh, an image of a band what seems to be like they're in a park or a, in a field and uh, according to Wikipedia it says that uh, the gatefold includes a group and mid-gig photographs taken by Nicky Wright at Parliament High Fields in North London uh, Chris Welsh would also comment about this picture in his book, uh, Close to the Edge, which says, The album's gatefold sleeve had an attractive Nicky Wright photograph of the band gathered in a leafly furrow setting. Flower Power was still alive and well in 1969. Um, also in Chris's book, uh, we get um, a quote from Peter Banks himself saying that uh, these pictures were taken at Parliamentary Hill Fields on Hampstead Heath. So the fact that there, you know, we have uh, Peter Banks saying himself that that uh, picture was taken in Parliamentary Hill Field. But we don't have any band member saying 
where this exactly was taken or we don't have any proof really of um, someone saying yes it was taken here so that leaves us still with a mystery to keep finding it really or well, we would have no luck unfortunately finding the album cover unfortunately all the other images are the same the one with the band in front of um, Valentine's fashions I can't seem to find any connection there with modern London and, and even in the photo the sign says that the shop is closing down so who knows what is there right now it's probably gone through so many changes over the last 50 plus years you know and also the Tanner and Bros garage uh, there doesn't seem there doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, evidence of that place uh, in today as well however there is one that did catch my interest was which was the old wine vault number 120 that the band is standing in front of so even if we type in the num one, number 120 which I'm guessing is the um, branch number and we do see a couple of modern day pictures that may be the same location of that place today and we look on the images we can see that that logo still seems to be around today and so to summarize um, what are the facts that we know well we know most definitely it was taken in 1969 by David Gahar we know that it's in London presumably somewhere in the Fulham area but being 50 plus years later the location is probably completely different however if it was an architectural furnishing shop there might be some uh, remnants or some evidence left behind that maybe we can pick up but maybe this book here of um, this furnishing shop would maybe give us some details and maybe we could order that book to see if there's anything in there and I suppose on that note, a question to ask yourself is, which version of the cover do you prefer? Do you prefer the UK version, or do you prefer the American version of the album cover? Um, I think for me, probably the um, probably the, the the UK version. I just like that Yes logo with the bubble right in. Uh, even though, for example, that logo would later disappear, and we would get the Roger Dean logo, and we would only see this bubble right in. Yes, on some of the combination albums like Yes Years and some of the later combination albums that we would see in the 90s and so they would later leave that logo behind. But um, hope you like this video, please subscribe to my channel uh, if you like this video. Uh, please check out my other video of the whole story of the Yes album covers and please feel free to comment if you have any more leads or if you have any suggestions and hopefully we'll find the location of um, this uh, album cover and please continue to enjoy the music. Thanks a lot. Take care.